we are back for chapter 9, or excuse me, chapter 10. This is the last chapter of the book, The Coming King. And this will be a good one, I promise you. <clears throat> the scripture is John 14, 1 through 3. Do not let your heart be troubled. <clears throat> Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go and prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. I am a preschool dropout. <clears throat> Actually, I didn't drop out. I was asked not to return. My memories are vague. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. My memories are vague <clears throat> of that preschool. I can see the winding streets with lots of trees and houses. <clears throat> I seem to recall that the school was in a home and behind the house was a cliff or a drop off. That's probably just my overworked imagination. But that's my four-year-old mind's eye recollection I can remember standing in front of the in the front entryway of the house and there was a big playroom <clears throat> with dress-ups hanging on hooks on the far side of the room there were crafts and other small children I hated it as soon as I got in the doorway the tears were flowing <clears throat> I only wanted to be with my mom, and I cried. <laughs> I'm sorry, Kristen. I cried from the moment she dropped me off until the second she picked me back up again. This started on a Monday, <clears throat> and when and by Friday, when my mom came to the door for me, the teacher said to her, again the memory of a four-year-old, you won't be needing to bring her back on Monday. I looked at my mom, and apparently she didn't need any further explanation. I wholeheartedly agreed with the teacher because I didn't think my mom needed to bring me <clears throat> there in the first place. Thus, my short stint as a preschooler ended, and joy returned to my life. <clears throat> I didn't like the nursery at church, either. I can remember watching for that half door to swing open during the whole time I was there. Occasionally, it would start to open, and I would stand to put my toys away, ready to leave with my parents, but it would be a false alarm. A different parent or that usher who counted how many souls were in the building that morning was there. <clears throat> I had this dread that all the children would get picked up and the half door would close and I would be left at church. But that never happened. Mom always came and got me, and joy returned to my life. When I entered kindergarten, I had an older sister who was in third grade, <clears throat> and we rode the bus together on the way to school. But every, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry. But every day I rode the bus home from school at noon by myself. I was dropped off at the end of our road, Curling Pond Road. Isn't that a pretty name? 
and I had to walk about five miles to my house <laughs> through the woods where scary snakes could slither out at any, any moment all by myself. In actuality, <laughs> it was probably only a quarter of a mile and I never did see a snake. I know Kristen has a deathly fear of snakes. <laughs> Once I arrived home before my mother who had been running errands, the house was locked and so I sat on the milk box outside the back door and cried, convinced that Jesus had returned and taken my mother to heaven and left me here on earth to fend for myself. About four minutes later, she pulled into the driveway and joy returned to my life. As you can tell, I was a bit attached to my mom. I loved her with all my heart and I just wanted to be with her. I would count the minutes until I could get back home so that all would be right in my life. <clears throat> Needless to say, as a small child, I anticipated her arrival whenever we were separated. A few years have passed, fine, a lot of years, and I still love her dearly, but we are separated by most of America, <clears throat> and I handle it just fine. <clears throat> As I developed emotionally and mentally, I came to understand that her love for me was always present whether or not we were in the same house. Our, I love our times together and always look forward <clears throat> to when I see her again. My father is with the Lord and I have a true anticipation for that reunion also. <clears throat> <clears throat> it's something that I look forward to. Something that I long for. Oh, you know where I'm going, but give me just one more story. When I had my first son, I remember once when he was just over a year old. I had dropped him off in the nursery at church <clears throat> and the nursery worker took him from me and sat him on the ground in front of a few toys his back was to me i watched him pick up a toy and start to play for just a moment then he turned his head <clears throat> and looked at the door where i was standing there was a look in his eyes <clears throat> immediately. The emotions I used to battle every time my mom dropped me off at nursery came flooding back into my mind. It was a look as if he was saying, You're coming back for me, aren't you? I turned and left so I wouldn't upset him. He did fine in the nursery that day, but I was bothered by that memory until I picked him up after the service. Then my joy returned. So now you know that I'm a bit of a head case. That's okay. I just want to be with those I love. And more than anything, I want to be with Jesus. I know that I have the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of me, and I know I have the word <clears throat> to pour over, but the bottom line is I really want to be with Jesus. I love my life. I have a wonderful husband, precious family, uh, precious children, a great church, a beautiful home and faithful friends, but I really want to be with Jesus. I long for the day when faith shall be sight, don't you? 
Now, <clears throat> I'm not suicidal or anything like that. I understand that he has a plan for my life, and I will faithfully serve him until he calls me home. But I do long to be with him. It's an anticipation kind of longing. It's that watching the clock, waiting for his return kind of thing, and it's really his fault. He's the one who said he's coming back to get me. John 14 starts with comforting words. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am you may be also. I love those verses. I love the promise that I get to be where he is. That's all I want, to be with him. Have you ever let yourself sit and think about the moment when... <clears throat> When you will see Jesus, I do all the, I do all the time now. What is Dutch will feel like? How how about the sound of his voice? Have you tried to embrace what heaven will be like? what your heart will feel like without the struggle of the flesh. <clears throat> Do you ever wonder what a dwelling place prepared by Jesus will look like? So many unknowns. Oh, for our imagination. To wrap his arms around. <laughs> but we know his promises are true. And greater than that, promised dwelling place are four little words. I will. Go come again I'm going to end right there today and you'll have to forgive the tears because my nurse was here today eh She didn't know if I would make it until the birth of Annie's baby. And I find myself in quite a conundrum. I want to see Jesus so bad. But I would like to see the baby, too. And it's all in his hands. And I have to rest in his plan. I'm sorry for the tears. It's just um, the way it is today. And I got the news that um, the nurse didn't know if I would make it till March 18th. So, 
God is good and he'll work it out according to his plan. And we'll read some more tomorrow.